All right. So for digital content, um, I don't know if any of you guys came to the one that I did last summer. Um, we usually do these at the beginning of the fall semester. And basically, we go through a couple things. So we kind of break down. Can you guys hear me OK? OK, my audio yeah. is weird there. And so it was glitching. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't me. Um, anyways, so we just we kind of go through just the um, like the simple ways to effectively run your media for your groups. And so just kind of like my like, if I could tell you everything in 30 minutes, my crash course tutorial on running group media. And so um, anywhere along the way, if you guys have questions, you can just like tell me to stop and I'll go back and re-explain something. And then we'll do a Q&A time at the end. Um, for your own benefit, um, I'm going to tell you right now to email me your email so that I can send you my notes because I go really fast and I have this all typed up and so I'll just send it to you and you can reread it later on your own time and it kind of serves as like a little like little like guideline. So if you want those, my email, um, I'm just going to type it into the comments really quickly and then you guys can go ahead and just email me your email if you uh, want them. Because last time I told everybody to put them in the comments and then I forgot to write them down. And so in order to avoid doing that, you can just email me. Out. So the, um, the first couple things that we're gonna go over actually before we like jump into like the really nerdy details of how to effectively run media, I just wanted to go over um, two things with you guys that will really help you out as you enter the semester. Just as student leaders, I'm guessing most of you guys are student leaders or your basic veterans you've been around before and you help out. So these things just really apply to you guys. And so the two things that we wanted, I wanted to go over really quickly with you is, um, the first thing is how do we avoid loneliness this semester and how do we kind of help our friends avoid loneliness because you know COVID is a really different season. Um, I have younger siblings and I've been talking with them and just kind of like kind of just picking their brains about like you know what are you guys nervous about like going back to school because um, I'm not going back to college and I haven't been on a college campus in like three years like you know doing school so for me I'm a little bit um, I'm kind of a little bit removed from that season of my life. And so, you know, just like kind of trying to figure out with them, like what are things that we could do as an organization to just help out students and stuff. And so we just kind of came up with some ideas of ways that you guys just kind of as leaders can help, you know, your friends and just your group mates kind of along this semester. And so just a couple ways to help avoid loneliness is obviously stay connected, you know, keep in contact with people. Um, as much as possible and have conversations with people. And that can be done while you're distancing or it can be done virtually. But, you know, don't just text people, don't just hop on social media and, you know, go in the comment feed and stuff. You know, take time to FaceTime people or Zoom call or Google Hangouts. Um, take time to meet with your friends on campus and stuff and just kind of look out for one another you know if you're on campus in a dorm room look out for that kid that's on your dorm floor that maybe like kind of goes to class and just comes back or look out for that person that's just not in your friend group that's just acting weird because I think it's really easy sometimes when one of our friends is kind of acting like a jerk or acting a little bit hostile to get annoyed with them when in reality there's actually something deeper going on and you just want to use as much discernment as possible and just you know take these opportunities in this rougher season to go talk to people and you know be a listening ear and reach out and then on the flip side you know if you're someone that's starting to feel like you're isolating you know ask for help don't be afraid to reach out you know just for starters obviously you have your advisors and anybody at the basic office we're totally open to talk to you nine to five Monday through Friday or you can message us on social media and we're always there to listen to you guys and you have friends and you have that community in your basic group that's there to listen to you so never be afraid to reach out to people because during this time more than ever I think we're going to see just such a rise in mental health um, issues and just battles and you know nobody's alone in this and so don't be afraid to reach out the second thing um, that I just really want to encourage you guys with is um, look for ways to just grow spiritually this semester 
um, you know, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of actually time that's being freed up right now by just a lack of like activities and stuff for you guys to spend more time getting into the word and just growing. But, you know, take this opportunity not to just grow personally, but to grow as a community. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys watched our kickoff series that we did, but we went through some ways that you could start like Bible studies on your campus and, you know, small groups and stuff like that. And so something that I just wanted to encourage you guys with is like seriously consider, you know, what can I do to kind of like boost my community in a spiritual way? And how can I do that? And I don't know for you if that's starting, you know, just a time with your friends where you like talk about what you're, you know, what you're going through on the on a weekly basis via Zoom or if it's the type of thing that you want to start a Bible study with some of your basic group or some of your friends on your floor, or if you're not comfortable with that, just starting to look for conversations to like share your faith with other people in simpler ways. You know, you don't have to whip your Bible out and start throwing um, Bible verses out at somebody to witness to them. It can be as simple as just having a conversation with them, but you know, kind of look for ways that you can set spiritual goals this semester. Um, and look at ways that you can use the COVID pandemic almost to your advantage. And I hate to say that because like, obviously COVID sucks, but you know, with the free time that we're given and just with this different season and this different climate, I think that there's a lot of people searching for something. And I think that as a church, we can really kind of come together here and be that voice and be that witness to other people. Does that make sense? Awesome. Well, that was my sermon for the day. Um, now we're going to get into really boring media stuff that I think is super interesting. So the first thing that we're going to go over is um, why, why do we care so much about social media and why is digital content super important for your basic group to thrive? Um, and that is because 88% of Americans aged 18 to 29 are on at least one social network. And I don't really think that statistic is true because I'm pretty sure everybody has it. And if you don't, um, I'm just going to leave it at that. And so, um, you know, when we're looking at how do we spread the news about BASIC and how do we reach out to people in our schools that, you know, don't attend like a club like this or, you know, are looking for a community group or like a faith-based thing. Um, social media, we found, is our most effective way often to do that because, it's a really cool place where people can connect and people can stay up to date on things. Obviously, you guys probably all have tons of social media accounts, whether that's Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or TikTok. Hopefully you have TikTok because it's kind of my favorite, even though they're trying to rip it away from us. Um, and so use your social media, though, to your group's advantage. And so just... um just like as you guys know, how many of you guys run your social media page for your group currently? Sweet. And so to those of you who don't currently run it, this is just as important for you because you can help with this information in meetings and stuff. You can get these notes and stuff to the person that does run it, or it's just really effective stuff to know um, in general. And so Obviously, like I said before, we find that media is the number one way to kind of, um, you know, help push basic on your campus. And so first things first that you want to do to like utilize your media to the best is you want to make it easy for people to find your social media accounts. And so I always recommend that your account handle is, you know, something like basic albany like at basic albany or it's like you know at basic suny geneseo or something like that you know if your basic group is the brothers and sisters of christ on the campus of you know northern plattsburgh no one's gonna have time to find your, your handle and if it's something really crazy like some people have been like basic group 263 i'm like no one's gonna find that when they're searching it and so you want to make sure that you keep your group tag simple and you keep the name on your group simple so you know basic geneseo or basic at this and then you also want to make sure that you're keeping like the most critical information in your bio so if you're currently meeting over zoom for example put the time that you have your zoom meetings and then put like that week's zoom link right there in your website or if you're meeting on campus you know put the information of like cool this is 
our group time, this is the day we meet, and then this is the room that we meet in. And make sure that that's always up to date in case anything changes. Because if someone were to see a poster or see a sign and they want more information about your basic group and they search for you on social media, you want them to be able to find it as quickly as possible. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you want to make sure that your account is used actively because if I go on an account and I see that there's no posts since like 2018, I'm not really going to think that the information in their bio is really up to date because even if it's totally up to date and everything's viable, it kind of looks like a dead account, you know? So we want to make sure that we're keeping our, um, our like information in our bio and our group information up to date at all times and that we're also posting on a regular basis. So I know that this is a little bit much for some groups and so obviously find what works for your flow. But I usually recommend to groups that you post on your feed at least three times a week and that you also post on your story as much as possible, whether that's like three, four times a week or at the least like make sure you're getting a couple pieces of content up there like three, four days a week. So, you know, you don't have to have active stories where you're literally like running a complete thing from like the time you get up to the time you go to bed, but you want to make sure that you're actively using the account, not even necessarily as much as you would use your personal. I don't know if any of you guys use Instagram a lot, but I'm literally on there for like four hours a day, but you do want to make sure that you're like keeping up with posting and you're getting content out there and make sure that you're, you know, actively posting about group meetings and special activities and stuff like that. And I know, you know, things are changing with COVID. Sometimes there's going to be less things to post about, but use that time to post more interactive content. So put out more questions and stuff, put out more feeler things. Um, I was just talking earlier with um, some people that I do consulting with on media and I was like, I, I cannot stress how great the story features are with like the polls and the question bars and the like quiz question functions and stuff like that for engagement because literally it takes people like a second to just like tap an answer on a poll question. And so we always see on the basic account that we get really high engagement with that. So just make sure that you're using as much of the interactive functions on the app as possible. So, and that's, that's more for Instagram. You know, there's other ways that you can interact on Facebook if you use your Facebook page a lot. So um, and this is kind of a tangent. I'll go over this more later. But the one thing that we do see most currently is that Instagram is like three times as popular as Facebook. So while you still do want to use a Facebook page, if your group has one, um, you want to make sure that you're primarily posting content on Instagram. So just a little hack that I use, I always cross post content. So if I post something on Instagram, I just go post it over on Facebook. And so that's just like super nice because then they're both seeing the content, but I like made the content for Instagram. So because that's our primary audience. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So the second thing is nostalgia is everything and people love nostalgic things. So if you've been around your group for a while, post some throwback posts and throw up some stuff to kind of engage people that may not necessarily still be a part of your group, but they still follow you. So everybody has like FOMO and they hate missing out on things. And one of the reasons that a lot of people unfollow accounts is because they feel like they can't relate to the content on them anymore. So as much as possible when you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to post today. Just go look for old photos and stuff that you can share of your group or something, because that's a great way to stay connected with people that used to go to your group and still kind of make them feel like they're part of the community. And now more than ever where you're not meeting and you're not going to see people necessarily face to face and a lot of stuff is remote and there's students that are coming in remotely and stuff. You want to make sure that you're engaging them from afar. So the next thing is what to post. Well, this is a little tricky, but video content gets three times the exposure and the interaction typically on a post than photo content or written content does. So as much as possible, you want to use video if you can. 
Now, you don't have to be a videographer and you don't have to have like a $3,000 camera to make video. You can use your phone. There's tons of apps. You can use boomerangs and stuff like that. But utilize video content as much as you can within your means because you're going to get better engagement with that. Also, um, and this is kind of back to a point I made earlier, but make sure when you are setting up your account that you're using up-to-date basic logos and photos and stuff. So um, we usually recommend that the groups use the basic logo as their photo caption or like a photo of the group or something, just because it's easier for people who are new to be like, oh, yep, that's it. So it just usually helps people find it better. So I probably should have put that higher up in the notes, but for some reason I put that at the end because I'm not organized. So now we're going to break down to some quick hacks on how to utilize the different um, social media pages. So the first one, obviously, is Facebook. So this is the media of the elderly. So people that are over the age of 30 and to their 50s love Facebook because back in the day they used to play games on it and now they just use it to fight about whether they're gonna vote for Trump or Biden. So Facebook, however, is still you know definitely a site that you wanna use. And Facebook is a really great way to stay connected because it's a lot more advanced than Instagram is and it's got a lot more features and so one of the things that I highly recommend you do with Facebook is if you are using Facebook regularly I recommend using a Facebook group instead of making your um, your basic like account a Facebook page so the way that groups work to your advantage is they're private typically so you know they're just the people that are in your group and you even can make it so that people can ask to join the group. So I always recommend you do that so that if new people are finding you, they can just ask to join the group and you can approve them. But that's just kind of nice because then it keeps like group details and things a little bit more private. It's really helpful if you want to do like discussions and stuff because then it's not just like out there for everyone to see and people feel a little bit more comfortable having like deeper conversations and stuff within. Plus, it's just a great place to have information because, you know, if you're posting information or asking questions, questions more of like a message board style you don't want to see that on a Facebook like page but in a group that's really helpful um, the other thing that Facebook is really good for is you can set up events so you can set up events for you know non meeting activities that you're doing and that's always a really great way to help people feel in the loop plus as much as I say I don't use Facebook, I always get excited when people invite me to Facebook events because it makes me feel important. So, you know, use Facebook events as much as possible for your group because it will make people feel important. So the second thing, the second site, I mean, is Instagram, which is the holy grail of media, and it's probably the best app ever made. And so Instagram is great because obviously there's story content, which is like a really great thing to use for interaction. And you have your feed, which is a great way to just, you know, put stuff up to kind of fill people in on what's happening, share group memories, stuff like that. So a couple fun ways that you can use Instagram this semester to enhance your group are student takeovers. I even saw a group doing one today and I was really excited because been recommending this to people for years and they never do it and so student takeovers are dope because you can let a student from your group just like run the story for a day and like do a day in the life of so-and-so on this campus and it's cool because you know everyone gets to see it and it's really fun and it's really interactive and it's engaging and it's kind of just cool to see like oh cool that's what so-and-so does every day and that's where they go eat and that's where they do this and so it's just kind of a fun way to give an outsider possibly who's just kind of like perusing the account like more information about basic and like who the students are and it's just a way to kind of engage on a deeper level with your group so plus then you'll know everything about this person which is either good or bad so the second thing is you have live functions. And I went over this with advisors um, about two weeks ago and some of the other student leaders, but 
your live functions are going to be your best friend during COVID. So a lot of groups, what we're recommending as a whole is if you are not completely virtual, so you know you are still doing somewhat of an in-person meeting, we're really recommending that you use IG Live to live stream your meetings. Just because the reality is um, a lot of students aren't coming back to campus. And a lot of students who are coming back to campus maybe don't feel comfortable doing activities outside of classes. So by live streaming your meetings, you're giving people a way to participate and watch your meetings that can't be there in person. So now if you're completely remote, I would just tell you to use Zoom, but I mean, we went over that with the advisors, so they already know that and that's what most groups were gonna do anyways. However, if you are doing a hybrid where you're in person, and you've got some students that are remote, I would just recommend doing it live. Plus, how great would it be if somebody doesn't have time to come to your meeting, but they know you're on Instagram, so they watch your live meeting and they want to join. So there's always some perks to that. So the third social media site that we utilize is Twitter. And fun story, apparently Basics had a Twitter since like, 2012 and we stopped using it in 2016 and I didn't know that when I came on staff so I found out that we had one the other day because someone tagged me in something on there and now we use our Twitter again so if you don't follow us on Twitter and you have a Twitter you should go follow I think it's basic.cm I can't remember but I basically just retweet everything that John Bevere says on there and um, share other content so Plus, I, like, I get really frustrated because I'm always really confused when I'm scrolling through Twitter who all these people are that I follow that I don't know, and then I realize I'm on my work one, and then I have to go like copy my tweets and retweet them online because I tweeted on the wrong page. So that's the only thing that sucks about running accounts for other people. <laughs> but we're on Twitter. Um, Twitter is a really great way to do interaction. Um, the only problem is because there's a keyword limit, it's not necessarily the best place to be posting like information. So if you're gonna use Twitter, I highly recommend you use videos and graphics because you can like relay information better with those because it doesn't matter how many like words there are because it's a graphic. And then it's also just great for engagement, but because so many people aren't on there, it's a little bit limiting because most people have an active Instagram or an active Facebook account. Not everyone has an active Twitter. So awesome. All right, and so then the last thing in my notes that I will be sending to you is there's just 25 tips for effectively running your media. And it's stuff like brand all your posts with the basic logo and follow students and other clubs on campus and use YouTube when you have questions or need advice, um, make Spotify playlists for your group, stuff like that. So there's a bunch of really cool, helpful tips in there. Um, and so you'll get all of those though in the email that I send out tomorrow. And so that's just kind of like the general media notes. Now, on top of that, what we're gonna go over now is just kind of like my COVID digital 101. So just kind of like some stuff that you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of just with the pandemic. But before I go into that, I wanna ask, um, how many of you guys are doing completely remote basic this semester? Yeah, I'm guessing most of you, or it'll be like partial. Okay, cool. So something that I really want to recommend that you use, and I will include these this in the notes, I'll include a tutorial for it, is um, familiarize yourself with the different ways that Zoom works. And so what we're going to do over the next probably like 10 minutes is I'm just going to go over how to run an effective Zoom meeting and went over this stuff with the advisors. So a lot of people already know it, but I think it's also really helpful information uh, for you guys to know. So the first thing that's really helpful with Zoom is maintaining the same start time every week and sticking to it. So if your group met at seven o'clock on Tuesdays, just because you're going to Zoom, don't just switch it to 8.30 on Fridays or Wednesdays or whatever, just because, you know, oh, well, we're going to go to Zoom, so we're just going to do it here. Like, try to keep your, your meeting time to the same time it would be if you were um, in person. And I mean, obviously, if you're switching it at the beginning of the semester anyways, that's fine. But, you know, try to keep your Zoom time the same because it'll help people that are just adjusting to going back. It'll just give one more sense of like normal for people and it's just easier to follow. 
The second thing is um, you want to try to maintain as much stuff from your in-person meetings as possible, but you want to be uh, careful that you're still able to do those things with excellence. So for example, I don't know anyone that's ever run a successful worship session on Zoom, but I've seen a lot of people try. So, you know, Zoom worship may not be the thing, but it's really easy to make a Spotify playlist and send it to people and have everybody pop in headphones and you can worship together on mute so that everybody else doesn't have to hear you sing. Because unlike at your basic group, you know, it amplifies it. Or, you know, use YouTube videos, stuff like that. But get creative with worship. Still spend time doing that if you can. But you want to do it with excellence. You know, you don't want to do it in a way where someone's going to get frustrated and just annoyed because they feel like they can't participate because of the sound. The second thing is you want to try to keep it as interactive as possible. And that can be really hard with COVID. But there's still some really great ways that you can interact with people on a computer. So I spoke at... LIU post back in like the end of March. I was actually down in New York City and the night before I was supposed to speak there, uh, COVID happened and so I had to come back and quarantine for two weeks because everyone was convinced I had coronavirus because I had been in New York City and I didn't. And anyways, um, so what we did though when I spoke at their group virtually was we played all these games on the computer together and we played like Pictionary and like all these other ones and it was like mad fun. And so I would recommend finding virtual games that you can play as a group. So in the notes that you're gonna get tomorrow, there is a link to a list of like 20 of them. Um, I think my favorite ones were Kahoot and Pictionary, but there's some really fun games that you can play with your group um, over Zoom even, and it's definitely worth the time figuring it out. Some other fun things you can do with your group is you can obviously, you can do virtual Bible study, um, you can do virtual small groups, and you can all go through online devotionals so that it's all paperless because then we'll save trees and not burn out our ozone. And then you also can do my favorite thing on the planet, which is Netflix party. So utilize stuff like that to your advantage. And I mean, those are just three options of fun things that you can do to keep things interactive. Like, I'm sure you guys can think of other things, but just be looking as much as possible for interactive things you can do with your group. So the other thing is um, just because you're virtual doesn't mean you guys can't bring in speakers for the semester. In fact, you can bring in more speakers because you don't need them to come to your group. You just need them to hop on their computer or wherever for like 45 minutes. So use that time to get speakers that maybe would be too busy to come speak at your group or would be far away. You know, some of you guys live in like cities that are like hours and hours from your campus and you have like a great youth pastor or senior pastor or church member that you're really close with that would love to speak at your group. And it's like now is the time to get people like that. I think I'm going to speak at more groups this semester than I even normally do because I just have to zoom in for them. And it's a lot easier for me to do that even on a speaking standpoint. So utilize that when you're booking speakers because it's a lot easier than ever to do that. And then just the fourth thing um, with running effective Zoom meetings is step up and help out your advisors. You know, a lot of people have older advisors that necess aren't necessarily great with technology. Other people have advisors that are just really stressed right now with work and family situations and they're homeschooling kids or they're doing things that are a lot different. And so looking for ways that you can kind of like step up to the plate and lead in your group is really needed right now. And um, there's so many ways you can do that, but you don't even need to be a student leader to do that necessarily. Um, you can just look for ways to serve that can help better your group and help you guys have a successful semester. Because at the end of the day, as an organization, we don't want to see you guys just kind of like float along and like get by and like, congrats, we made it through the school year and it sucked, but we did it. You know, we really want to see you guys um, dive into relationships with the Lord and come out stronger than you were at the beginning. And so just looking for ways that you can serve and help your advisors to equip you with those things is going to give like an amazing return that you're going to be Really grateful for so I would just really challenge you to do that so that was like the really short version on how to effectively do digital content and then just some extra COVID goodies 
but I wanted to spend the next couple of minutes just kind of doing discussion with you guys and answering your questions and concerns and just thoughts on all of this. So go for it. So I know for my group, um, we always kind of like hesitate, like what do we post? Because I think all of us, like as a collective, we all have Instagram and we have like hundreds of followers and like our basic account might not have that many followers. So I think that's why we're like so hesitant to like post like a day in your life or something. Cause we're like, no one's going to watch this. Yeah. But, like, so I guess just like, how do we manage that? Like, does do the followers matter or should we just keep doing what we're doing? So there's a couple things. I mean, I don't think the following necessarily matters because um, the only way to grow your following is to post more. And unless you go buy followers, but that's cheating. Um, so that's the best way to post things is the more you post on your account and create engagement, the more people will come. And so one of the things that I always recommend people do is I'm like, well, if this account doesn't have as many followers, but you do just tell your followers, you're going live on this account for the day be like, Hey, you know, I'm part of this club and I'm going to be running, you know, a live thing and doing a day of the life over here. So come follow us. And you might find like 10, 15 of your friends, you know, they're like, Oh, that's so cool. And then they follow the account. So actually doing stuff like that can work for promotion in that sense. And you actually can get more followers by going over and using the account that doesn't necessarily have as many. So does that make sense? Sweet. I have an unrelated question. But then I might have a related one. But do, could you tell us the dates for the um, basic con online for the fall? I can. The dates are going to be October 23rd through the 24th. And I'm going to stop.